as Defiance County knows how to throw a party. Are we ready to win? We've got to. Hey, I want to thank John. I want to thank all these artists who came out tonight. Let's give them a big round of applause for helping Mitt. We love them. We also love Bob Latta, your congressman, who's doing a great job in Washington, D.C. He's right over here with his wife, Marcia. And I see Dave Yost over there, the watchdog for the taxpayer, our auditor in the state of Ohio, and, of course, our great governor, who I'll mention in a second. Folks, do you agree with me that we cannot afford another four years of Barack Obama? Yeah. I agree, too. And, folks, the score is tied. We're here on the football field, but we're at the red zone. We can't afford not to leave everything on the field in the next 12 days. Are you going to do everything you can to ensure Mitt Romney wins this election? Are you going to make more phone calls? Are you going to go door to door? Are you going to put more signs up? Are you going to go vote? Now, let me tell you about voting. As you know, here in Ohio, we can vote early. And tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock a.m., it opens up for voting. Go to the Board of Elections before you go to work. Bank that vote. That way, on Election Day, you know what you can do? You don't have to worry about voting. You can help get other people to the polls. What do you say? Will you do it? Go early vote. We need it. So Barack Obama is going around Ohio saying, please reelect me because my economic policies are working. That's what he's saying. Well, let me, well, let me ask you, okay, uh, and, and let's use his, his own measurements. He said when he was running for office, if you elect me, I'm going to cut the deficit in half. That's what he said. Now, folks, we just found out we had another trillion-dollar deficit this year. Never had a trillion-dollar deficit until the last four years. The debt has gone up 50 percent. Folks, is it working? No. Okay, when he ran, he said, if you put this trillion-dollar stimulus package through Congress without any Republican help, this is what's going to happen. We're going to create all kinds of jobs. He said that unemployment today would be 50 percent lower than it is that's nine million jobs we're losing. Folks, is it working? No! No, it, it hadn't worked. And what's, your, what's worse is you know what he's proposing for the next four years? More of the same. You're right. So he's going around Ohio. And he's got a shiny new pamphlet that he's saying is going to create jobs. I encourage you to look at it. It's a new stimulus package. It's just like the old one. It's nothing new for America. Now, he does have a couple new things in it. One... He'd like to raise taxes on about a million small businesses. You know what's going to happen if he does that? We're going to lose 700,000 more jobs we can't afford. Mitt Romney's got a tax reform proposal that the experts say will create 7 million new jobs over the next 10 years. Isn't that what we want for this country? I call that a choice. Now, in the debates the other night, you might have seen these debates. Did you see them? I thought Mitt Romney did really well. He made us all proud, didn't he? But in that debate, uh, you heard that President Obama's making some other promises about the next four years. One was he's going to cut our military spending. So, and he's already proposed that he's in his budget, he wants to cut $500 billion, and then the sequester that he recommended to Congress is another $500 billion. That's a trillion dollars we can't afford. And in the debate, what did he talk about? He said to Mitt Romney that Mitt Romney was about horses and bayonets. Well, I've got news for the president tonight. It's not about horses and bayonets. It's a modern military to meet the challenges that we face all over this world. And it's ensuring that our men and women in uniform have what they need to protect this country. President Obama also had said something else in that debate. He said that Mitt Romney took the auto companies through bankruptcy, or wanted to, and he said that Mitt Romney didn't think the auto industry deserved any government help. We need to talk about this tonight. Look, I supported a rescue for the auto companies, but these are desperate attacks by President Obama because he doesn't want to talk about his record, he doesn't want to talk about his proposals because there's nothing new, and they're not true. First. 
It was President Obama who actually took GM and Chrysler through bankruptcy. That's a fact. Second, Mitt Romney did propose government help. He proposed government guarantees for loans. He proposed the government backing up the warranties. And folks, all the independent fact checkers who have looked at this agree President Obama was wrong. He was not telling the truth. Finally, and this is what's most important, there is no question in my mind that Mitt Romney's policies for the future are going to be better for our auto companies, for the workers, and the, for communities like Defiance to get us back on track and to make the auto industry stronger. Think about it. Everything Mitt Romney is proposing is going to help the auto companies. He wants to ensure that the tax code works so that those companies can be competitive. We have the highest tax rate of any country in the world now among the developed countries. We're competing with one arm tied behind our back. Mitt Romney wants to change that. Think about it. It's Mitt Romney that wants to put in sensible regulatory relief for these companies so we don't have these bureaucrats in Washington making it more difficult for us to create a car here in America. That's going to help the auto companies and the workers. It's Mitt Romney that wants to get the health care costs down, that wants to ensure that the energy costs are down so you can produce things as manufacturers here in America and so our gas prices are lower, which is going to help the auto companies. It's Mitt Romney that wants to ensure we have fair trade out there, which is exactly what's going to help the auto companies. Folks, if you live in defiance or if you're an auto worker here tonight or if you have someone you, you know who's related to the auto companies, I can tell you tonight, and I know you believe this, for the auto companies in America and here in Ohio, we need to elect Mitt Romney, the next president of the United States. You know, all those federal issues we talked about, health care and taxes and energy and so on, are one reason John Kasich's so strongly supporting Mitt Romney, because he knows he needs a partner in the White House so Ohio can meet its potential. But I got to tell you, what John Kasich has done as governor of this state is fantastic. He has stood up for the people of Ohio. He has put us in a position to be able to succeed. Folks, when he got elected, we had a deficit of $8 billion working with the legislature. He closed that deficit, not by raising taxes, in fact, he actually cut taxes to make Ohio a better place to do business. That's who John Kasich is. <laughs> Folks, John Kasich is the real thing. He's my friend, and he's our governor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome John Kasich. Defiance rocks, doesn't it, huh? You're going to rock it tonight for Mitt, aren't you, when he comes out here? You know, I had a chance to um, walk and see some people and get up in the bleachers, and there are a lot of children here tonight. You know, politics in America is not just about whether your party wins. What matters is what happens when you win. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of children here tonight. We have a $16 trillion national debt. You know what? It's not fair to our kids, is it? It is not fair to our children. And you know, think of it as a family thinks of it. Think about um, what it would be like to leave your young sons and daughters big debts because you used the credit card with reckless abandon and didn't care about their future. You wouldn't do it. But it's been happening in our country, ladies and gentlemen. You know, one of the things that I think is the most important in, in our country is that mom and dads can be confident that we are leaving an America for our children that is better than the America that our mothers and fathers left to us. And it doesn't happen by accident. It happens because of discipline, courage, and thinking about the next generation. You know, we're doing better in Ohio. You know, when I came in, there were 400,000 people that had been put out of work. Now we're up 112,000. 
We did have $8 billion in the hole in our budget. Now it's balanced. We had 89 cents in a rainy day fund. Now we're up to a half a billion dollars in our rainy day fund. But I have to tell you, every day, when I think about the economy, I'm on pins and needles. You know, we're a great state. All the way from the Northwest, all the way to the eastern part of our state, from the farmlands to the cities to the suburbs, we got what it takes. And we've got one other thing. We got the values of hard work and faith in God and be being kind to our neighbors, okay? But there's one thing that holds us back. Folks in Washington with a $16 trillion debt, and the president thinks the answer is more spending. Somehow he believes that if we can just pump more money into government, that that's going to be the answer. Higher debt we can't afford, ladies and gentlemen, because it's saddling our children and it's threatening their future. You know what else he says? Raise taxes. You know, I'm against raising taxes for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons I'm against it is because I used to work in Washington and now I work in Columbus and I know what they use that money for. And believe me, it does not make sense to send them more money. And the regulators, I mean, I got to tell you, when regulators do not respect small business people, when they don't respect the farmer, when they don't respect the grocery store, woman running that store, when they don't respect the small business, you know what they do, they paralyze you. Ladies and gentlemen, been a lot of elections I've seen. You know, I remember when Ronald Reagan beat Jimmy Carter and restored the American dream. I want to tell you, I got a feeling that this is that kind of an election where Mitt Romney can restore the American dream, give us hope again, and shine up our country and our state. Now let me just say to you that, let's look at his experience. He was a, a job creator. Do not be fooled by people who say that professional politicians know how to fix the economy. You know how to fix the economy? People that have created jobs. And Mitt Romney did all over America. He's a job creator. He was a great governor. He didn't just talk it. He took deficits to surpluses, job losses to job gains. And we all remember those Olympic Games. That's where he was just a natural leader. And we've seen it in the debates. You know what? You got to come out. You're the people that understand what this is all about, what this country is all about, what these decisions are all about, about what the next generation is all about. I know you. We grew up in the house next door. We're connected. We know about the American dream. And we got to march. We've got about 10 days to march. We're going to win. We will win if you do every single thing that you can do. And when somebody says to you, ah, do you really need to make a call? Do you really need to argue with somebody at the water cooler? You think about your children. You think about your grandchildren. Because elections make a difference. And I want you to just reflect back to the eve of that election with Ronald Reagan and how America changed all for the good. And I believe with the election of Mitt Romney, America will be stronger. Folks, we can see it, can't we? We can see the mountain out here, can't we? We're going to climb it, we're going to get to the top, and we're going to deliver a victory. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of Massachusetts, the next president of the United States, Mitt Romney.
Thank you. What an honor to be here with you this evening. I, I'm so appreciative of your being here and showing your support. This sends a message not just across Ohio, but across the whole country. This campaign is growing. The momentum is building. We're taking back America, and it's coming soon. Now, I have to tell you, I, I don't recall having so much fun in such a long time as to be able to listen to these guys this evening. You were over here watching them. Was not just amazing to have Big and Rich performing and then and then Meatloaf, I mean, Meatloaf was here. Did you believe that? And of course, having Randy Owen of Alabama, wasn't that fabulous? Look, these guys have other things to do, you know. They have lives. They can go to a concert where they're getting paid. <laughs> but they decided instead, because this election counts so much, to come here. And I want to thank them for their generosity and their support. Thanks, guys. By the way, I, I want to say a special thanks to the people who just introduced me, the governor, John Kasich, and of course, Senator Rob Portman. You know he's been playing Barack Obama with me in the debates, and he's a lot tougher. I got to tell you, he's really something. I'm just kidding. And of course, Congressman Bob Latta, thank you, Congressman, for your being here and for your support and your work. He's out there turning out voters for him and for me, and it makes a real difference. And I want to thank Auditor Dave Yost. He's been with me from the very beginning and appreciate his help. Thank you, Dave. Now, if you've been watching TV over the last few you, weeks, you probably noticed that there have been some debates going on TV. And, and those have been good debates. I've enjoyed the chance to get out and talk to the American people and have people see who I really am as opposed to just seeing what President Obama says about me. And uh, those debates have given us a chance for our campaign to get larger and larger and to build a stronger degree of momentum and support. And the amazing thing is, the debates have led to the president getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. And, you see, he's now been reduced to talking about, uh, well, word games and, and protecting uh, characters on Sesame Street and uh, <laughs> attack after attack on me that he knows simply aren't true. And, 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 and you know, you're seeing a campaign which is an incredibly shrinking campaign right before your very eyes. This is a time when America face, faces big challenges. We have a big election, and we want a president who will actually bring big changes, and I will, and he won't. This is, this is a defining election, I believe. This is an election which will define our nation, this is an election which will define much of what happens in the homes of America, and it will define what happens in your own home. This is an election about families, people of America, big things, big things like your heart and your family. If you're a senior, or if you've got a, a senior in your home that you're caring for, you see, this election will have a big impact, because if that senior gets sick and needs to see a specialist, and you call the appointment secretary of that specialist and ask for an appointment, what you're likely to hear because of Obamacare is that, that appointment secretary saying, I'm sorry, we're not taking any more Medicare patients. Because under Obamacare, under Obamacare, they're cutting $716 billion from Medicare. And 50% of America's doctors are responding in polls saying they're not going to take more Medicare patients if Obamacare goes forward. Let me tell you this. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to replace it. We're going to honor the promises made to our seniors. And for those, for those of you that, that have a, you're 40 or 50 years old and, and, and you got a good job, you know these are supposed to be the most productive earning years in your life. And so you're hoping to put away a little bit for retirement and maybe help the kids in college. You hope to be able to buy a home that would be worth more when you retired and sold it than, than what you paid for it. But there's been a lot of disappointment over the last four years. I was speaking with a, with a man from Waukesha, Wisconsin, just a few days ago. He said to me that he used to have a job that paid $25 an hour plus benefits, and now we can only get one that pays $9 an hour without benefits. 
and that Obama campaign slogan about forward, does it feel like forward to him? Does it feel like forward to the 23 million Americans struggling to find a good job? I'll tell you what feels like forward, and that's replacing Barack Obama and getting a president that has an agenda to get our economy going again. You might be a, uh, you might be a college student, and I know that the, the president wants to get college students to come out and vote for him, but let me tell you, if they do, they're making a big mistake. Because what he's not telling them is that when they graduate from college, after four years of his presidency, half of them won't be able to find a job or a job consistent with a college degree. And by the way, not only will they have ten or twenty thousand dollars in student loans or more, they'll also have their share of the federal debt, which is now fifty thousand dollars a man, woman, and child in America. And so when they get out of school, and they get their first pay stub, they're going to note all that money that goes to the government. And that money is going to be paying for that debt. It's for debts they didn't even rack up. They were racked up by me and my generation. Not fair to them. And what's the president's answer? Add another trillion dollars every year. Keep on growing the deficit. Look, I won't do that. I'm going to get America back on track to an honest, balanced budget and make sure we don't pass on those burdens to our kids. Uh, if you've got kids in school, you may, you may be a little concerned about your kids in school. You want to make sure they're getting the education they need so they can excel at the jobs of tomorrow. And perhaps you have a school that's not as good as you'd hoped it would be, and, and you see there's a charter school not too far away, or perhaps another public school that would be better, and you'd like to be able to send your child there, but because the Obama campaign gets the largest contributions from the teachers' unions, why? They're not going to give you the chance to have that school choice. Well, I will. I want the American parents and kids to have the choice of the schools they want to go to. Look, in real, very, very real ways that touch the American family, we can't afford four more years like the last four years. We can't afford four more years of President Barack Obama. We would take this country on very different paths. He'd take it to $20 trillion in debt. We'd be like Greece with the threat of the kind of economic crisis that you're seeing in Europe. I instead will finally cut federal spending, cap federal spending as a percentage of the economy, and finally get us on track to a balanced budget. We've got to do it. It's the only moral thing to do. He, of course, will push through Obamacare, and it's going to change the relationship between you, you and your doctor. You're going to see health care insurance costs go up and up and up. They've already, you know, when he ran for office, he said that your health insurance premium would go down by $2,500 a year. By now. That hasn't happened, has it? It's gone up by $2,500 a year. And with median family income of $50,000 a year, a $5,000 difference makes a huge difference. So I'm going to repeal Obamacare and replace it with reforms that actually help hold down the growth in health care costs. And of course, the president's a guy who, uh, he, uh, he's been struggling to find a, a plan that will actually get people to work. We've now had four debates, and uh, he's had a chance to describe his plan, to defend his plan. He hasn't been able to. He doesn't have a plan other than more of the same. A status quo candidate is not going to lead this country into economic vitality and job growth and rising take-home pay. His plan is another stimulus. His plan is hiring more government workers. Nothing wrong with government workers, but that's not going to get the people of America working again in the private sector. And, of course, he also wants to raise taxes. Taxes being raised does not create jobs. I have a five-point plan, Paul Ryan and I do, that will get this economy going. It's got five parts that will invigorate America, create 12 million new jobs, and rising take-home pay. First part, first part, take full advantage of oil, coal, gas, nuclear, renewables. Second part, 
Second part, make sure trade works for us. Look, we can compete with any nation in the world. Our workforce is the most productive in the world. I want to open up new markets for our goods that we can sell products and services to around the world. But I also recognize that if nations cheat, and I, I, I hope you understand this, when a nation artificially holds down its currency, it means its products are artificially lower priced. It means that its workers are not being paid as much as others because they're holding down the value of their currency. And that creates an unfair advantage and it kills jobs. I saw a story today that one of the great manufacturers in this state, Jeep, now owned by the Italians, is thinking of moving all production to China. I will fight for every good job in America. I'm going to fight to make sure trade is fair. And if it's fair, America will win. Number three, we're going to make sure our people have the skills they need to succeed. We have 47 different federal government training programs reporting to eight different government agencies. Think of all the waste in the bureaucracy. I want to take that money and give the fair share of it to Ohio and let Governor Kasich put together a training program that works for the people of Ohio. I'm going to get a balanced budget and then one more thing let me mention. And that is I want to champion small business. I want to make it easier to start a business and grow a business. Time and again, time and again, as I've gone across the country, people in small businesses tell me they feel like they're under attack from their own government. It keeps raising taxes higher and higher and higher, and regulators see business as the enemy. Look, I like business. I like the jobs businesses create. I want to see more business and more jobs and more take-home pay. And so I'm going to encourage businesses to come to America, to grow here. I want entrepreneurs to have a bright and prosperous future. And by the way, I'll tell them when they succeed something you've known from the very beginning. If you have a business, you did build that. Now, the Obama campaign is slipping because they can't find an agenda to help the American families. This is a time for big challenges and a time of big opportunities. We have a big choice. And frankly, we're going to elect a president that's willing to make big changes. And I will. I'll get this country growing again with your help. And I'll do something. And, and by the way, the way I will do that is not by lifting all the, the challenges in my own hand and trying to change everything on my own. What I'll do is what I've learned to do throughout my life, and you've learned as well, which is if there's a big job to do, you find ways to get other people to work together with you and accomplish things on a, on a combined basis. That's been the story of America. In the very early days, they looked at America and said, gosh, when a, a barn needs to be built, people in the whole community come together and build it. I will do something that's not been done in Washington in a long time. I'll reach across the aisle. There are good Democrats who love this country. There are good Americans who love this, good Republicans who love this country. I'm going to work with both. I'm going to meet regularly with Democrats and Republicans, work together, work together to solve our problems. And let me tell you, I'm optimistic. Optimistic. I am. Uh, I'm excited about the future. I, I've seen the American spirit throughout my life. I've seen great qualities of humanity in the hearts of the American people. It's. Uh, it's been something I've seen as a boy. It's something I've learned throughout my career. And I was, by the way, a, a Boy Scout leader some years ago. Any Boy Scouters here? All right. Thank you. And. Uh, and I was at a court of honor. A court of honor is a, 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 a gathering of Boy Scouts and their parents and friends where we award Eagle Scouts and where we give other awards for boys who've earned advancement. And I was at the front of the room at, on a, at a chair at the end of a for Michael table. I was right down towards the end next to the American flag. And the person that was at the microphone speaking was the Scoutmaster from Monument, Colorado. And he was telling the story. I hear a Colorado up there. There she is, one. And, uh, and he was talking about how his Boy Scout troop wanted to have a very special American flag. And so they, they purchased one with 
gold tassels around the outside. And then they sent it off to the Capitol and had it flown above the Capitol Dome. And then when it came home, the boys said, you know, wouldn't it be neat if our flag could go on the space shuttle? And so they contacted NASA and asked them if they'd take the, the flag on the space shuttle. And I guess space is at a premium in space, you know, so. But they decided, okay, we'll take your flag, boys. And they put it on the, on the space shuttle. And Scoutmaster said these kids were so excited as they were watching from their home rooms at school on the TV set as they watched the launch of the space shuttle Challenger. And then they saw it explode on the TV screen. And he said he waited a couple of weeks, and then he said he called NASA and asked them if they had found any remnant of their flag. And they had not. He said he called every week, month after month, but still the same answer. No, we have nothing for you. And then he was reading some months later in the paper the list of some of the debris that had been found with the Challenger disaster. And he saw on that list the mention of a flag. So he called NASA again, and they said, in fact, we have a presentation to make to your scout troop. And so the NASA folks and the scout troop came together, and he said our boys were presented with this plastic container. And they opened it up, and he said, there was our flag in perfect condition. And Said, and then he said, that, that's our flag on the flagpole next to Mr. Romney at the end of the table. And so I, I reached over and grabbed that flag and, and sort of held it out. And it was as if electricity was running through my hand and my arm. Because I was thinking about the sacrifice of those sons and daughter. Those sac the sacrifice for learning, for knowledge. The people in our space program. The people who put themselves in in danger so that we can have new understanding, these pioneers. It's part of the American spirit that we live for something bigger than ourselves. We live for our nation, we live for our churches, we live for our schools, for our communities, for our families. I think of the, uh, I think of the single mom with a kid or two at home who's scrimping and saving so she can put good meals on the table for her her child or her children. Think of my own, uh, my own sister. My sister's in her uh, mid-70s. She has eight children. Seven are all out on their own and married. The last one was Down syndrome. He's in his 40s now and she cares for him every day, helps him live a normal and full life. I think of heroes like that in my life. I think of... Uh, I think of couples who decided to put off exchanging gifts between themselves this Christmas so they instead can make sure their kids have a great Christmas. I think of, uh, I think of the guy who's got two jobs right now so he can make sure that he can afford clothes for his kids though, so they won't stand out at the school and look different. Look, we're, we're a people who are given to great causes. I think of the young people who come out of college or high school and say, you know what, I'm going to put my career on hold and I'm going to enlist, become a member of the armed forces of the United States of America. One of my, one of my favorite hymns, national hymns, is America the Beautiful. And the verses in that, of course, start off by describing the beauty of our land and beautiful it is. But there are other verses that describe something more profound. Oh, beautiful for heroes, proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. Where are, will our veterans please raise their hands and members of the armed forces and be recognized? Right here we, uh, we have a gentleman who has an unusual hat on. You can't see it there. It says World War II veteran. I don't, uh, I don't know him, but I know him. 
I know the men of his generation and the women of his generation who provided for us a most prosperous nation upon the face of the earth and freedom, who stopped unspeakable darkness from spreading across the land. We owe a great debt of gratitude to men and women of the greatest generation. But you know, there aren't as many of them as there used to be. And they can't hold as high the torch they used to hold, the torch of freedom and hope and opportunity for us and for the world to see. And so now it's our turn. We're going to have to grab that torch and hold it aloft for our families, for our future, living for great and beautiful things. We're going to have to hold aloft the torch of freedom. It's America's honor to be able to carry that torch, and we're going to. This is a critical election. Paul Ryan and I are going to give every ounce of our energy to get America strong again, to build a strong economy with strong families and strong security and a military second to none in the world. But we need something from you. We need you to vote and vote early. We need you to get your friends to vote. We need you to find people who voted for Barack Obama and changed their mind. We need to take America back. I need Ohio. Ohio's going to set the course of the nation. We're going to win. We're going to make America, as it's always been, the shining city on a hill. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God bless Ohio. And God bless the United States of America.